I'm Corbin Smith. And I'm Tad Hensinger. Listen in every Tuesday to the Seahawks Central Radio Podcast on the Pro Football Central Radio Network. Want info on the latest draft prospects? Need the scoop on the latest developments at off-season workouts and training camp? Craving in-depth analysis after every Seahawks game? We've, We've got, got you covered, covered 12s. 12s. We cover everything Seahawks year-round for the best fans in the National Football League. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at PFC underscore Seahawks and listen to our latest podcast each Tuesday on ProFootballCentral.com. Experience the difference. I'm Ted Hensinger our lights alongside Corbin Smith. We're drawing closer and closer to the regular season opener against the Green Bay Packers, and we've got a special treat for you tonight. Seahawks safety and former Boise State standout Jaron Johnson is joining us on the phone tonight. Jaron, thanks for taking the time to call in. We really appreciate it. How's your foot feeling tonight? Oh, my foot is fine. It, it's fine. I, I, I'm all right. I'll be uh, ready for practice uh, first day. Glad to hear that. We were a little concerned when we uh, saw you go down last night. So glad to hear that. So, John, we have did a little research on you here, and we've noticed an interesting thing with you and Richard Sherman. Every so often, they've got college teammates they play in the NFL. But what's really unusual about you is you and Richard Sherman played in high school. So we we're kind of wondering, from your days going back to Dominguez High School in Compton, how has your relationship with him changed over the years, and how has it helped you out as a Seahawk? Um, I mean, our relationship still pretty much stays the same. I mean, it has stayed the same since we were kids. You know, we, uh, we're we good. You know, that's my boy. But... um First coming into it, it, it was it was it was helpful for me because we you know came in the same year, so I was able to have somebody I knew already, you know, just for a comfort level and being in a new state and new city, it was just a comfort level to have someone there who was new to it all as well that I've known since I was what thirteen fourteen years old. Yeah, it had to be really beneficial, Jaron, to have somebody that you had known such a long time that was also a rookie that could go through this process with you. Uh, you played college ball at Boise State uh, after only receiving a couple scholarship offers. Boise's been known for playing at a high level and producing under-the-radar NFL talent. First off, what is it about Boise that makes it that they're able to produce such great NFL talent? Um, you know, when I was there uh, with, with Coach Pete, Who's now at uh, UW? Um, it's his philosophy, you know, and just how he, he he put that chip on our shoulder, you know, the underdog. Because you know, a lot of us there, myself included, when I got there, I had one other um, scholarship offer, which was San Jose State. So I just felt I had something to prove. You know, I feel like that was the theme with everyone. On the uh, on the on the team, you know, everyone felt like they had something to prove, and we knew that we were better than what you know other schools projected us to be. I guess you could say, and you know, uh, a lot of carryover goes to the Seahawks now with Coach Carroll. You know, it's, uh, it's you have a lot of hungry guys who were who were slept on, you know, in the draft. Me, myself included. Once again, I was a undrafted free agent, so uh, a lot of what I was taught. And, you know, not uh, what I was taught in college kind of carries over, like, from a mentality standpoint to now. Yeah, and I, that leads me into another quick question here. I mean, I'm actually a huge Boise State fan. I've been following the Broncos uh, since before you even went on to campus. And uh, one particular player, and I know that uh, you are a, were close friends with him, and I've seen on Twitter some of your posts, uh, especially saying that the number 11 should re be retired. You know, Kev Kellen Moore, arguably the most decorated player in Boise State history, yet he hasn't gotten much of a shot in the NFL. What are your thoughts as to why this is? Um, I mean, the measurements. You know, with Kellen 5'11", doesn't have the strongest arm. You know, he doesn't have this, he doesn't have that. But what Kellen has in him, is a, he, he, Kellen is a dog. You know, Kellen, he knows how to win football games. And once he gets his shot, I, I, I truly and honestly believe Kellen will do great. And Boise State really, really, really needs to get that number 11 off of anyone else's back. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I completely agree with you on that. Yeah. I, there's never been a player at the, in the on campus that's done what he did at Boise State, and and it's not an offense to the player wearing it right now, but uh, that should be up in the rafters. 
Oh yeah, no, no, no doubt. Uh, what, is, what is William Rhodes? He's a he's an electrifying player. Uh, but I mean, that's just out of respect. If I mean, I just honest, I'm not even policing and politicking trying to get 23 retired. But 11, <laughs> <laughs> 11. You know, that's just I, I I feel strongly about that. And I'm sure a lot of our former teammates will as well. That number needs to be put up. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. And what I really liked what you said there about why Kellen Moore hasn't gotten that shot is because, you know, of his size, his measurables. And that kind of sound reminded me of a guy that you play with, your teammate, Russell Wilson, there. And I guess he was just lucky to fall in the right situation with Coach Carroll that gave him that shot. So I guess hopefully Kellen gets his shot down the line and they retire that number 11. So, Dron. Yeah, it's, it's, excuse me. Oh, sorry. I was going to ask. See a question here, John. Uh, it's your fourth year in the league. We're kind of wondering now at this point. You went undrafted and you signed up to the Seahawks in 2011. We're curious. What was it like for you going undrafted? And what advice would you give to those rookies that right now that are undrafted and they're trying to get that last roster spot as the preseason winds down? Um, undrafted. It was. It was tough. It was. Um, it's, 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 you had to be strong in the same, You know, in the situation. But I was frustrated. It was a lockout. I, I wasn't certain on if there was going to be a season. And then when the season did come, I still didn't know where I was going to be playing ball. But I mean, ultimately, it was, if you get an opp- all, you, all you got for is opportunity, you know, and that's all I ever wanted was opportunity. And I try to make the most of each opportunity I get. And you know, to the to the guys coming out now, you can't worry about uh, when what day is the cut day or. When does the roster have to get taken down? I mean, you just really, you know, I'm not getting a lot of reps. You know, it, I, I've seen it all. So, you just, when you do get a rep, you got to go full speed and try to make something happen and just let the coaches know that you're out there and that you know what you're doing and that you can't do it. So, it's just really just putting your best foot forward and, and, and trying to uh, be the best that you can be. Yeah, and, and obviously it's all about focusing on the moment as an NFL player at any level. You don't want to get focused on, you know, when is the cut date going to come? That's a, that's definitely a good point. You're a member of the now well-renowned Legion of Boom. Currently you're playing behind all pro talents, Earl Thomas and Camp Chancellor. We know it's tough to find reps with those two guys on the field. My question for you, Jerron, how do you juggle preparing for both safety spots in the event that one of them gets hurt while also handling your special teams duties? Um, since I've gotten here, um, Coach Rashard has, has done a pretty good job with me and telling me, you know, uh, making sure that I knew the stronger and free safety roles. So um, it's just, it's, it's my job, <laughs> you know. At the end of the day, it's, it's my job and, my job is to be prepared for, you know, whatever it is they ask me to do. And um, that's how I approach it. You know, I I know a strong safety. I know the free safety. If anything were to happen and they would call me in, I'm, I'm ready to go. That's good. That's good to hear because really the NFL, it's one play to the next. You, your future is never guaranteed. So that makes total sense just to be ready at any given second. So moving on here a little bit, let's take a brief look at last season and we'll touch, tie it in here this season. Last season, you guys gave up only 172 passing yards a game, which is 22 yards lower than the next closest team, which was the Saints. We know that the coaching staff really helps you guys prepare and it, you know it's helped lead to your dominance as a, as a unit. And in light of the new league's new emphasis on illegal contact, we're wondering how do the coaches help prepare you to continue to play at such a high level and still stay within the confines of the new rules? Um, it's all on technique, you know, uh, you got to sharpen your tools, you you know, and adjust to the game. I mean, we're still going to be physical. We're still going to be who we are, but you just got to rely on your technique more so that you don't foul or, you know, uh, create the, the contract or whatever it is that they're calling. Just got to sharpen your tools up. Yeah, I think that the the rest of the league has really overreacted to this. I mean, obviously, uh, the increase in penalties is it's obvious based on stats, but uh, it looks to me, at least based on what I've seen these first three games, that if any team is adjusting well to this, it's been you guys. And a lot of people have been blaming the Seahawks for these rules, but you know, you guys play fundamentally sound and you're able to make those adjustments. We know that each member of the Legion of Boom has their own unique talents 
that they bring that makes the whole better. And we also know that you were a 170 pound linebacker in high school. Has that experience helped you adjusting at the NFL? I mean, obviously you were able to play at 170 pounds at a position where that's pretty light and you were able to uh, do a great job there. Has that experience helped you now as a safety in the NFL? I don't give it too much credit, man. Our defense in high school was kind of, <laughs> it wasn't complex at all. So my only job at the middle back, I didn't have any run gap reads or anything. It was see ball, get ball. So, <laughs> so I was more of a, uh, more of a like rover kind of guy up there, you could say. But uh, I mean, it, it helped me. It did help me um, with just allowing me to be a natural football player and just uh, you know being able to see the gap run fits and whatnot. But uh, like I said, uh, I would not go too far like a, as if I was a true middle linebacker. But um, yeah, it definitely helped me a little bit. Yeah, it sounds like just kind of the experience of kind of getting in there and the nitty-gritty of it a little bit, that just really helped you, you know, roaming the field and making plays. So, Jerron, you've been with the team a few years now. You've watched the team rise from a lower point to now you've culminated it all with a Super Bowl title last season. Last season, the team was dominant just about every way you could think of. What do you think that the team needs to do to match the success that you guys had in 2014? Um try to get better each and every day at whatever the case may be and just continue to compete and, and, and grind. You know, we uh, we make each other better with the way we practice and the way we, we go out there and compete against each other. And we just got to keep that going. Uh, Jerron, I'm going to jump to an interesting question here uh, regarding uh, pranks in the locker room. I know there's been a lot of great pranks with the Seahawks. I know that Coach Carroll's pulled a few of them over the years. And uh, one of the friends of our show, uh, Michael Bennett, is a guy that we've heard over the years is one of the craziest uh, pranksters in your locker room. What What are some examples of some things that he's done in the Seahawks locker room? Uh, I, can't, I can't even recall anything off the top of my head right now. I can't. Um, to Michael Bennett. Well, if Michael Ben is not the guy, what are, who are some other guys that are pranksters in the locker room? What, what are some examples? Um, well, our equipment staff, they uh, had a cool little prank going on with uh, a Gatorade cooler and it had a fake snake attached to it. So when you open the lid, it was a snake that popped out at you. That was one of, that might have been one of the best pranks I've seen. I remember seeing that one on a, on video feed. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I, I, that one was pretty good. But we'll have to get Michael Bennett for false advertising himself. Uh, we'll have to joke with him about that yeah, next time. Yeah, I, I think he. And you'll you'll have to mention to him, hey. Uh, yeah, he gave himself way too much credit on our show. Uh, <laughs> you'll have to talk yeah, to him definitely. about that. So, Jerron, we're. We don't want to keep you too long. We know you're busy. We know you're getting prepped for next week already, I'm sure. But before we let you go, we want to ask you one more question. We've heard that you've got a clothing line or something like that coming out here. I believe it's this fall. Could you maybe tell the 12s out there a little bit more about it so they know what's going on? Uh, yeah, I have a, a website, justgeron.com. Um, I'm going to uh, be getting some T-shirts printed out. They're, they're already in progress. They'll be coming soon. Um just for, you know, whoever wants to show some support. And, and you know, that's pretty much it. Whoever supports me and supports the team, I'd appreciate it. Uh, Bronco Nation, 12th Man, you know, whoever. I don't care who you support or who, what team you like. Just support me. And, you know, the shirts are there for that. And we'll have all the information on uh, my Facebook and my Twitter and also on my website as well. Yeah, that, that's, that's outstanding. And, uh, again, thank you, Jerron, for joining the show on tonight's podcast. And Again, 12s, you can follow Jerron on Twitter at just underscore show off. That's J-U-S underscore show off, just to make sure don't put the T on there. Uh, also on Instagram, just underscore show off. You can find him on Facebook, facebook.com slash Jerron Johnson NFL. And like he said, his website, just Jerron.com. He's going to have T-shirts on there. Uh, definitely need to check it out. But Jess Duran has a T in it, though. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, the Jeff Gerard does have a T. That's a good thing Don't to point off. The, the official website. There we go. <laughs> so, again, J-U-S on the Twitter and Instagram. It's just Jerron with the T for his website. Make sure you get that right, 12s, and check it out. Again, Jerron, we thank you so much for joining the show, man. We appreciate it, and best of luck this season. Thank you for having me.